to do real quick is uh, review. Just I'll, I'll talk about the the main organization level KPIs that we're going to be tracking, and I want feedback from the community on what you guys think about them. So what we'll do is I'll, I'll also have to write up some documentation where I describe the the KPIs and why we're tracking them. But just to to give you the categories, the, the main things we're looking at, and not to give you the numbers yet, because the numbers, I would say, are still a little fuzzy. We have to do a better job of um, justifying why we're choosing these numbers. And, and so we're not just taking them out of thin air. And again, the the basis here is we, we know that this is just kicking off the process of doing uh, key performance indicator tracking. It's not meant to be perfect. And it is absolutely meant to get feedback from the community and then more importantly, or not more importantly, but importantly, um, feedback just from the real world on seeing how we perform and, and how performance and you know actually operating is going to inform the things that we're tracking. So not to belabor this anymore, the main categories are we will be looking at the top line number of, of transactions that are broadcast over the network every month. And this will be aggregating transactions that happen on uh, the main chain. And then also sidechain transactions. So uh, we'll be, we will be looking at the total volume of transactions. So ostensibly, uh, this means the amount of like actual things that people are doing with our blockchain and with just the blockchain um, uh, sidechain protocol. So for now, the sidechain protocol is operating on testnet or this uh, parallel testnet. So we will be tracking that and we'll be adding those numbers to what we see um, on the public explorers for the main net. Number two, we're gonna look at the number of sidechain design partners. So these are actual companies or projects uh, or just other, you know, other groups that are working with us hand in hand to launch their own blockchains, launch their own sidechains. Um, so we, we do have a target for these and we already have some partners that, again, we've been talking for a while, just waiting for these announcements to go live. Um, one, we're just waiting for the the media company to broadcast the announcement and then we can actually talk about it publicly. But we do already have design partners and we're targeting a certain number of them by the end of the year. We'll be targeting a certain number of them every month. And we're going to have a very aggressive goal of getting people to work with us to build their own side chains. Then we're going to be looking at the, the nitty gritty. And, and for now, it's going to be on that parallel test net where the side chain system's operating. We're going to be looking at the total number of side chains that have been initiated. And then we will be looking at the total active side chains that are operating on that test net. So we will be tracking these metrics. So we have some idea of, uh, do people care about what we've already released you know, with the SDK? Um, it, and are they actually using it to do things? And of course, it's on a test net. So these aren't going to be production level things. But we, we need to make sure that people actually care about what we're building. And we're driving interest in it. And, and then getting the feedback, importantly, the feedback um, so that we can inform what we're building to make people care about it more. Um, so these are some of the metrics we're tracking. And then the last metric is going to be the, the total number of monthly users. And this is aggregating uh, users across a, a whole bunch of our, our media assets. So everything from uh, website visits to social media, follows, engagements, um, you know, mailing lists, subscribers, people that use the faucet, for instance. Um, now, the number of uh, sphere downloads as well, just things that we can actually measure at a very high level and in aggregate. So we're just going to have some, some baseline number and we're going to track apples to apples over time to see how that number grows. So these are the main categories and we'll be releasing the actual number. So next week, what I'd like to do is have the, the divisions uh, talk about their own KPIs. So these are the organization-wide KPIs that we're, we're going to be looking at the big picture of are we performing or not. Uh, but each division is going to have their own KPIs that they're tracking and working towards that feed in specifically into uh, you know, one or more of these, these organization KPIs. Um, so they will present to you next week, and hopefully this will give you a, a better picture of what's going on. And then what I'd like to do is actually write up a blog post um, that presents the table of the KPIs and rationale for why we chose these especially so that once we get this in writing, we can get some, some uh, feedback from the community on it. So hopefully that makes sense. And you know, if nothing else, at least now we have a standard over which you know, we can measure ourselves over time. Okay, so what else? Um, as always, we're, we're trying to just refine how we, we operate as an organization. So one thing that I, I've noticed is 
We're churning out an enormous volume of work. And, and you can hear this in all the weekly insiders or go back and listen to them as podcasts or on YouTube. And there's just an enormous volume of work that's being churned out all the time. Every week we have updates. Every month, every quarter, you can aggregate them and see just the enormous amount of work that we're doing. But the big question is, uh, is it all useful? Does it all matter? Um, so th there are different ways to measure that. And one, if we were to look at just the market price, the answer would be no, probably not. We're probably doing a lot that the market doesn't care about. And that's okay because we're, we're not managing the project to the market specifically, but it is at least an aggregator for, for uh, performance where, where you know the broader world is giving us feedback on what we're doing. So again, I'm not saying we're going to manage to to what the market's telling us, but we do need to you know, pay attention and, and get some feedback. So we're just trying to improve what we're doing and moving this, consolidating the team calls that we were doing twice a week to once a week and then broadcasting it live that once a week is part of this effort to just get more efficient at what we're doing. And let's see. So ongoing priorities, and I'll just list some of the big ones here. Uh, the Developer focus is still priority number one. And you heard from Lucy that we have over 2,200 developers registered with us in some capacity. These are either on HDE or with Heap. And now, like Rosario said, we need to actually get them to do useful things and get them to participate in, in tangible ways, not just signing up for information, but then to take that information and translate it into products, translate it into side chains, translate it into completed HDE tasks and so forth. Um, so one thing that I really like that I, I like that I saw last week that's in this vein of trying to understand more how we can engage with our developers, Manon did an awesome interview that she published on YouTube, and I highly recommend everyone check it out. It's with Xavier and Pontus. So Xavier's interview is in French, but she had a translation on the bottom. So thank you for that. Uh, it was fantastic. And Pontus' um, interview was, was you know, very good. Uh, and I'd say his avatar in the interview just cracked me up. So you guys check it out if, if you can. But the point here is we need to do more of this. So we need more dev interviews. We need a better understanding of what our developers care about so that we can engage with them in a meaningful way and make sure that what we're doing actually matters to them. So the product team is the other big focus. And product team formation was, um, you know, it's work in progress, but just launching the product team, I think, is a game changer for us because now we have an action arm there will be action in partnerships and actually building uh, real time with, with uh, clients and with partners. And this is what Rosario has been giving you guys updates on weekly. Um, and we already have, uh, Palo's already been working on a tokenization module or tokenization um, sidechain so that other developers can now take this and, and learn from it and launch their own tokenization applications uh, or applications that are part tokens. Uh, we've all already kicked off our first big design partnership on building something for a partner. Um, again, hopefully that PR goes live this week and we can actually talk about it. And uh, Horizon Labs, which is uh, lending the, the bulk of the technical team to the product team, uh, is also in process of hiring more developers to join that team and a product manager. The core tech continues to develop. This is obviously a, an extremely high priority for us. And in the near term, you're going, to, you're going to be presented with some preliminary performance numbers for the proving system. Uh, Alberto alluded to this, that we've been going through some performance tests. And I think it's extremely important to actually divulge the results of these tests in the community so that we can all get excited about the results because the results are actually fantastic. And finally, we're always in the process of rethinking messaging. I, and I, heard, I heard some uh, feedback last week, and I've heard this just kind of intermittently over time. Uh, the question is, are we getting too corporate. And as the, the nonprofit foundation, we, we for sure organize like a company. We, we for sure operate like a company. Uh, and, and the point of that was because we need to actually use resources efficiently. We don't want to just waste resources. And if we say we're going to do something, we have to actually execute on it. And that's why we organize the way we do. But it's a really fair, uh, fair point of maybe we're, we're getting a little bit too corporate and maybe we need to think about relaxing that a bit uh, and see we can. So I'll, I'll tell you just some thoughts that popped into my head is uh, I still think that we're not engaging enough with the community on governance. And I just want to say thank you to Trovolino for the Zen app that you provided. So we will respond like Rosario said, uh, but things like this are, are huge. So I, I'm, uh, you know, I do have comments for you, Trovolino, on the Zen app. It's basically reapportioning the block reward in, in different ways. Uh, my, my hunch, and this will be, I'll tell everyone now, my vote is, 
I think we need a voting system for macro level changes like that uh, because I I, uh, I don't like the idea of making big changes unilaterally. It could have economic impact, like big economic impact for people, especially like adverse economic impact for people. So those are things that I try not to make decisions on unilaterally. And guys, I'm really dying for this voting system because we really need to be able to pull sentiment from the community directly so that it's not us here making unilateral changes. That's why the things that we do as an organization tend to focus on actually delivering technology and and we try not to change the rules of the game, like the rules of the system. We try not to make these types of changes because we don't yet have a credible voting system. So if we do a community poll, that's not a credible voting system because you always have a poll construction and you know, sample bias and you want to make sure you have a representative sample of people that actually care about the ecosystem and you don't want to cluster sentiment in a particular stakeholder group. You want to have wide disperse um, your sentiment aggregation across the community. We don't have this yet. And that's why as an organization, we tend to steer away from these, these macro changes. Um, that's not to say that we don't make them in times of crisis if we're forced to. Um, but, you know, I, that's just my, my sentiment. The Zen app is fantastic, though, because it actually opens some really good uh, questions. And I just love the fact that someone's actually using the process. So we will respond formally and we'll provide feedback and the community will be able to provide feedback directly. This is the first and probably most important step in community governance is to actually have these types of uh, open dialogues. So I'm really happy, Trollino, thank you again for actually posting that. And again, uh, finally, I'm going to say that our core messaging, I still think, needs to be clearer, um, you know, cleaner, and just convey exactly why what we're doing is so important. And one, one fact I'll leave you guys with of why I'm saying this is Horizon is now truly a competitor and a peer to two other projects, Polkadot and Cosmos that are worth a billion dollars to $4 billion uh, in, in market cap. And we are exactly in this space competitively. And maybe our SDK and documentation isn't as refined yet. It's still a work in progress, but our technology itself is extremely interesting at the core technology level. And, and our organization has really strong value propositions to add to the technology that I think are compelling. And we're starting to see partners uh, start to join our ecosystem because of it. Now, the market doesn't quite understand this, and I think it's, it's always a reminder that we need to continue to refine our messaging of exactly what we're doing and why, and you know, why people should care. 